Hi guys, Greg here, Sightench, and to see what I got for you today, I'm visiting uh, 2 Finsbury Avenue. Let me take you there and let the guys tell you what they do in here. My name is James Wibley, I'm the engineering lead for Morris Row. So behind us here is our project called 2 Finsbury Avenue, or 2FA for short. We're delivering this on behalf of Sir Robert McAlpine and British Land, following on from the success of one board gate behind. You'll see a lot of really amazing complex schemes uh, across this project, which will be shown by Anthony Blair, our slip form manager, and James Reed, our lead project engineer on the job. I'm James Reed, the project engineer working on the 2FA job. Basically, you, what you're seeing is the top down construction. We're down at B3, structural blinding's gone in for the works. You see over there, we've got some small ticket carry cranes, which are delivering the reinforcement to construct the um, raft slab down here, pits for the cores. We've had multiple different temporary works elements from SIU whalers holding up periac up axis decks going down. We've got pipelines, which are connected to service the concrete for pouring down here, which have got temporary works designed for. We've got multiple levels as you'll see in steps and folds in the slab. So all the ground has been designed structurally from, from the temporary case. We've calculated all the batters for the works to be completed. We've got still fixes fixing, concrete gonna be pumped down here. And you can see the sea camp piles in the background, which is basically retaining all the soil from caving in on us. All of this has been calculated out and it's a amazing project to work on to be honest to enable the slip form construction we had to construct these launch beams these concrete which are supported by the plunge columns firstly we had to do the blinding design which allowed reinforcement stop these big bars which are look like they're poking through the bottom are actually for stability of all the reinforcement to construct the walls so we got a temporary works design completed for all of that work this then we built the slip form around to allow that to go up I'm Anthony Blair, I'm working for Morris Road, the project manager on the slip forts. We're standing on the east slip form, which is at Chief Finsbury Avenue. It's quite a unique one where there's a lot of um, changes to the rig as it goes up. As far as we know, it's the first time the crane has been connected to the slip form itself. Other contractors have got the cranes to climb up on internally of the softs but not connected to a slip form rig. A lot of design work went into getting that crane to function, be lifted, using the hydraulic systems of the slip form itself. There's been a lot of learning. We did a lot of high risk reviews, seeing what the challenges are um, and trying to mitigate them. Even within Morris Road, there was swimming systems that had to go in, we had to counter for any sort of snags, walls, checked. We, we developed a system where we, we actually have to do a daily check on every item with because there's so many different components within the slip form. The walls can change thickness. Um, there's only five millimeter tolerance between the shims as it travels up. And there's four 14 millimeter dividag rods that this are suspended from. So there's a lot of checks. We put um, sensors within the, the rods as well, um, which then connect to our computers. So any load change, we, we know straight away it sends an email. So we, we've mitigated all our risks has worked very well all the way to the top. We have one on the west core as well. We've had to dismount the crane onto the walls, onto bracket. Again, there's a whole system involving some specialist contractors to actually get this whole thing to, to dis dismount onto bracket, which um, was quite a feat in its own right, I must say. Um, took a lot of people coming together, a lot of different contractors, um, hydraulic specialists for the team there. And we've got about two weeks left on this core to get up to 166 9 out of 5 when we, we complete and then we just mount that crane and we start our dismantle process on the rig. I'm having a high school engineer. I'm enjoying this work and he's my engineer. I love construction way and that's my baby here, tier 16. <laughs> now we are doing the three floors down nearly 20 meters down from the ground. I'm enjoying it. Construction is uh, challenging anyway. I'd say to Greg, this is obviously how fit the walls were at the start. So the, the walls on the slip started at the bottom at 750 millimeters thick. Then as we went up, we had to reduce the walls by 150 millimeters at a climb as we went up. So down below here, we've got inset panels, 
Yep, you put the first inset panel of 150 millimeters in. Uh, we fix it with dummy dag so it's hung up and, and secured. Then as we went up, when we need to reduce the walls, a new insert went in front of the last one. And that's how we let the walls go from 750 to, uh, to 300 thick. Bolding actually cantilevers out over Sun Street. In the design work of the slip wall, up to level 20, we had to take it out of plumb by 20 millimeters and then take it to the top. And once the building is is getting built and completed, slowly it will actually come back into the zero plumb. So a lot of engineering work in the background has been done to achieve that. The, we also had a look at how we're going to keep our datum control right. So we're using EDMs at the bottom. We actually did an exercise um, with some other specialist contractors to look at um, using distometers. It, it actually doesn't work. We proved it. We had a look at that. So using an EDM to shoot up our datums is the best way that we've actually found as a practice. We do it in two places and tie it back in. Datum control has also been axial shortening and settlement within the building. Overall, we're actually looking at about a 35 millimeter settlement with all the other trades, facade, everything done. That's what they're expecting. So we've super elevated, but by the time we got to the top, by 35 millimeters. W with regards to the crane, there was lots of learning done as well, even within our special supply of the rig. We started off with uh, 12 ton jacks all the way around. You'd get a little bit of slippages, things like that. So we then removed all of those and replaced with three six ton jacks in each location to help with redundancy. So one fails, you still got extra over in the design. Within the project, uh, Macau Bynes have got their own cranes, which operate for the hairs and the steel erectors and everyone else. This crane is dedicated to the slip form. So there's a lot of interaction between this crane and the others coordinating the, the lifts. When we load out, obviously we can't overload the rig. There's only certain areas you can put steel. So that coordination to keep this system going, because it, this is more like a, a production, like a, like, like a Toyota production line than normal construction. So every trade has to be working all at the same time. Um, otherwise it fails and stops. You literally stop for the day, you get a dry joint and that's it, you stopped. You gotta prepare it again. So having that crane dedicated to the rig, supplying all the doors, all the steel consistently, and the halfins, we've got about 300 halfins per floor. So everything has to work like clockwork, otherwise the whole system stops. Placing of concrete was obviously its own challenge. Uh, we started off with a, one layer of concrete at 110 cubic meters to get around. So the strategy was to have two, two placing booms, two pumps, in order to fill the shutters all at the same time maintain the layers then the concrete mix designs obviously we started this in summer so we had to make the concrete set at a certain rate and as temperatures have gone now it's right down to minus fours actually a week ago um we've changed the mix designs so we've got about 12 different mix designs as the weather changes and the temperatures drop um and even to the point where we're adding hot water and a sort of like a, a 15 percent blend um, just to keep production going. Otherwise your production just stops and you end up filling shutters and stopping for a day.